Hello, welcome to the Mirror of the World. I want to thank you very much for joining today. I believe that you are going to be greatly blessed, and God is going to show you something in His Word. You know, the Bible says that um, the Word of God is a mirror. You find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. And He says that as we, as we read the Word of God, we will see the glory of God. And we will be transformed into what we see. So I believe uh, tonight, because we do this 10 p.m. UK time every day, we read the word of the Lord and then we pray for the sick. I pray that tonight, as we read the word of the Lord, the Lord will show you something in His word, in Jesus' name. My name is Uki Adios, and I'm a pastor at Heaven of Glory Church, Duty. So tonight we're going to be reading the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 1. I would like us to go straight to the word. Please get your Bible, invite, invite your families and your friends, you know. Uh, let's read the word. I particularly want to encourage you to post your comments, whatever it is that I minister to you from the chapter of the Bible we're going to read tonight. Please post it, you know, on this video on Facebook or on YouTube. And let's just be a blessing. So to someone. Let's go into the word. Proverbs chapter 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the word of wisdom, to receive instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion, a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. To understand the proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise, and their dark saying. Verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, wisdom. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of your mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace on thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinner entice you, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for the blood, let us lock privately for the innocent without cause, let us swallow them up alive as the grave, and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance, we shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us, let us have one pause. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy food from their path, for their feet run to eat and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any boy, and they lay wait for their own blood. They love privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy for gain, which taketh away the life of owners thereof. Wisdom cried without, she uttered her voice in the streets. She cried in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gate. In the city she uttered her word, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. For ye have said at not all my counsel, and will none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity, I will mock when you fear, when your fear come as desolation and your destruction come as a wild wind, when distress and anguish come on you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They will none of my they will none of my counsel, they despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple 
shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. For whoso hearken unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. We bless the Lord for his word. I want to share one or two things with us from his word. Uh, when we look at that chapter, the first thing that comes across to us in that chapter is the, the call for wisdom. The need for us to seek wisdom. The, the book, he started, the chapter started with an invitation to wisdom. He says, a wise man will hear and with increased learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. To understand the proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark saying. Wisdom is the ability or result of an ability to think or apply knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense, and insight to benefit mankind. So let's look at some of the benefits of wisdom. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to attempt to do that because um, I actually don't have enough time. But I'll just give you, you know, uh, some 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 examples, some of the benefits. Wisdom builds. Wisdom gives life. We can find that in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 12. Say, Wisdom is a defense, money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to them that have it. Wisdom gives strength. He said, Wisdom strengthens the wise more than 10 mighty men which are in the city. Wisdom brings success. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10 again say, If the iron be blunt and he do not wear the edge, they must be put to more strength. For wisdom is profitable to direct. If you want more profit, then you need wisdom. Wisdom gives you a reward. Proverbs 24, 14 says, So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When you are found it, then there shall be a reward. So when you find wisdom, there is a reward for you. So it's important for us to, uh, to get wisdom. The Bible says that wisdom is the principle. But I particularly like that. And he said, when you find wisdom, there shall be a reward. And your expectation shall not be cut short. So let's quickly talk about how do you find wisdom? Because this is what this chapter is all about. Um, wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. You know, since we started this series, the Lord's been showing us some things, and there are things we need to pay attention to. So when we look at Second John chapter 1, for example, and the need for us to walk in love, we saw the connection between walking in love, that is, keeping God's commandment. You remember Jesus Christ said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And then he went on to say that, you know, when we do that, you know, he will reveal himself unto us. So there is a connection between walking in love and then having revelation. You know, it's one thing for us to pray. If prayer will, you know, we, we make all things happen, we'll probably have some, you know, maybe there won't even be any need for us to do as much prayers as we are doing because there will be a lot of results. But there have been a lot of prayers that have been offered, you know, but, you know, the result is not commensurate with the amount of prayers that have been offered. And it is not that the Lord doesn't answer prayers. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that before we go on our needs, he has already had us and he has answered us. So that means that we need to look at things we need to do better. And there's a connection here between revelation and walking in love. And I can see another connection here between the fear of the Lord and revelation, between the fear of the Lord and wisdom. So he said that, you know, the fear of the Lord brings wisdom. So when you reference God, he will give you spiritual wisdom. So, and the first step, you know, to getting wisdom is to trust and to reference the Lord. So we need to start with God. That is the first step in learning. The first step is for us to bow down to God. To reference God means to respect Him. Now, I'll give you an example. I do things because God says so. 
not because people deserve it. So if the Bible says we must submit unto one another, I do it because that is what the word of the law says. Uh, I don't debate the word of the law. You know, um, there's a difference between when you have weakness, you are not able to do something, and then you trust the Lord to help you, and you arguing about it, and you debating it. You know, the, the word of the Lord is not a subject of debate. You know, when you have someone that you respect, if people are speaking evil of that particular person, if you really respect that person, what do you do? You walk away from that place. That's what the Bible meant by saying that blessed is he who does not see in the in in, in the seat you know uh, in the in, in the council of the ungodly you know uh, blessed is that man. So you walk away from that. So I do things because God says so. So we must see ourselves as reporting to God in all situations. This is very important. This is very important. Everything that I do. I do it not because a high authority said so. Uh, by the grace of God, I've been privileged, you know, to, to serve in churches. And, you know, not because, you know, I, I move churches, because God sent me, you know, moved me to a town for a particular assignment, and I'll be part of that local assembly. And sometimes, you know, it amazes, it amazes me because a lot of people do things because the pastor says so. So you go to the place of worship, not because the pastor is your townsman or your a pastor is or you have most of your friends in that place you go to that church because the lord asks you to go there so for example in acts of apostles chapter 16 i believe you know paul wanted to go to asia to go and preach the gospel that's a good work that's a nice thing to do but the bible said the spirit of the lord forbade him from going the, the spirit of the lord said don't go there i have another assignment for you so we do things because the lord wants us to do it that is showing respect for the law. That is showing respect for the law. I believe that something that you know need to come back to church in this day and age is the respect of the law. We need to have the reference of the Lord back in church. You know, uh, and when we respect him, God will reveal things unto us. The key to revelation is reference. For God. The key to revelation is reference for God. The key to revelation is us respecting God. We have regard for his word for his uh, for his word. God must become a personal, you know, you it must be a personal thing unto you. So it is not the God of your pastor or the God of your father. He must be your God. And we all must live our life as if we are accountable unto him. So I must respect my wife. And if you're a woman, you must respect your husband as unto the Lord. So you must respect your boss at, at the office as unto the Lord. So whatever we do, we must respect the Lord. So uh, even though the police, police is not on the highway, I keep, you know, to the highway rule. I make sure that I observe the speed limit. Why am I doing that? Because God wants me to do that. That is not just respecting the law. That is respecting the law. That is respecting God. So I do things as a child of God because I do not want to bring a disgrace to the name of the Lord. Now, uh, uh, it's okay for, for, for people to be living together, you know, male and female, when they are not married. It's okay in some society for, for them to do that kind of a thing. But as a child of God, because I respect God, that is not okay. It's not okay for me to do things like that. And what the Bible says, the Bible says that when you do that, when you respect the Lord, God will reveal some things unto you. You know, what, what I particularly like about the scripture we read tonight, I was talking about, you know, there are dark sayings. There are things, you know, you say the secret things belong unto the Lord. There are things that is going to move your life to the next level. There are things that you need to see. So the Bible says that when you reference God, when you respect God, when you have the fear of the Lord, the Lord will reveal those things unto you. You, you don't need to, we don't need to, you know, bang the gates of heaven like we do. We don't need to do, you know, we, we, we need to begin to observe some of these things. 
We walk in love is an important thing that, look, I can do confession 1,000 times if I am walking in strife. The Lord, will not hear, the Lord will not hear me. If I am proud, the Bible says that God resists the proud. He keeps a proud person at a distance. So if, I, if, um, if I'm full of myself, if I don't humble myself, that means I am already at a distance. The probability of God hearing what I am saying is very small. Are you with me? So it's important for, for us to begin to respect God. Now, let me read a scripture to you that I really think is going to bless you uh, quickly. Uh, Psalm 25, verse 14. I want you to write this scripture down, Psalm 25, verse 14. You know, go write it out, put it on your wall, make a post out of it because it will show you some. Listen to this. I'm going to read from different translations to you. He said, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. Do you want to see the covenant of the Lord? The Bible says that the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. So when you fear God, you know the secret of the Lord. Wow. Hallelujah. Let's listen to what the Living Bible translation says. Say, friendship with God is reserved for those who reference him. With them alone, it shares the secret of his promises. So how do I know the secret of his promises? The fact that I'm reading the Bible does not mean I will know the secret of his promises. You know, there are people who read the Bible. You know, Jesus Christ said, uh, he said, the spirit gives life. The letter kills. The spirit gives life. He said, the word that I speak unto you. One translation of that Bible, of that, Bible, uh, of that verse says, the words that I speak unto you, they are from the Spirit. They are from the Spirit. So when you gain access to the realm of the Spirit, when you gain access to the realm of the supernatural, you will begin to participate in the trans transaction that is going on on that level. Then you will have access. You will see things that the natural eyes cannot see. And obviously, what is going to happen to you you are going to have great success. Praise the Lord. So let me read it from Amplify. Say the secret of the sweet, satisfying companionship of the Lord have they who fear, revere, worship him, and he will show them his covenant and reveal to them its deep inner meaning. Wow, isn't that amazing? Uh, how about God revealing some things to you about the blood covenant? How about God revealing some things to you about the marriage covenant? When you understand the marriage covenant, oh, you will not violate your wife. You will not violate your spouse. I know we talk about uh, men violating women. Some women nowadays do so. They oppress women. Uh, sorry, they oppress men. But when you know the secret of his covenant, your life will be on another level. Let me end by praying this prayer for you. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon you. The Spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, and might. The Spirit of knowledge and, and of the fear of the Lord shall come upon you as you listen to this word in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that your delight will be to obey the Lord only. You will not fear man. The only person that you will fear is going to be the Lord of hosts. I pray that you will not judge by appearance, false evidence, or hearsay. You will defend the poor and they will not be exploited. You will rule against the wicked who oppress them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray for the sake. If you are sick, I want you to lay your hands on yourself. You know, the Bible says that we will lay our hands on the sick and they will recover. So if any part of your body is hurting tonight, I want you to lay your ear yeah, uh, Somebody tonight, you are unable to sleep. You will have sound sleep tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that brother. I pray for that sister that has been worried for some time and is not able to sleep. Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that you will grant that person watching this video 
whatever time of the day they are watching it, you will grant them sweet sleep according to your word. In Jesus' name, I command every spirit that worry to go. In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for it. And I bless your name, Lord. And I pray for any other type of sickness, Lord, stomach pain, headache, migraine. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that they go right now in Jesus' name. Your word says that you have taken them away, that they are no longer there. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, I command that migraine to go right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for it, and I bless your name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Very quickly, uh, before I go tonight, I want to do you know, something that you know I always look forward to doing. Uh, Jesus Christ said, I came so that they might have life, and uh, sorry, I came so that they might have eternal life, and eternal life is having a personal revelation of God. Eternal life is knowing God. Eternal life is not another life that is coming in, in the world beyond, you know, that is coming after. Eternal life is now. You know, John 17, uh, 1 to 4, you can go and read it later on. Jesus Christ said, this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God. You know, eternal life is not participating in religious activities, is not going to church, is having a personal revelation of God. And that begins with you giving yourself, giving your life to Jesus Christ. So if at any point in time you have never done that, I want to invite you to come and meet my Lord, my Savior, the best thing that ever happened to me. I love Jesus so much. I love him. I love him with all my heart. And the same thing that he has done for me, he can do the same thing for you. I'm telling you, there's nothing that is as good as you having the joy of the Lord in your heart. You know, the Lord will give you access to the supernatural, to the realm of the supernatural, so that you will not live an ordinary life. And maybe you once knew him as a result of the word that you heard tonight. You are saying, you know what? I, 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 want, to, I want to check my ways. You know, I'm coming back to the Lord. Enough of all the things that I've been doing. Tonight is a night that I want to rededicate my life, or this afternoon, or this morning, that I want to rededicate my life unto him, I want you to please say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. I repent of my sins today. I believe you died for me so I can have eternal life. I ask you to come into my heart. And be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Congratulations. You are now born again. You welcome into the family of the Lord. I want to congratulate you for taking that bold step. You will see my email address on the screen and the number on the screen. I want you to please, you know, uh, send an email to me or send me a text message. You know, we want to send some materials to you that is going to help you, that is going to support you so that you can grow spiritually. We are committed to doing that. That is, our, that is our assignment. That is what God has called us to do. You know, we, we don't want it to be ashamed on the day of his coming. You know, we want you to make the Lord with joy in your heart because you know that, you know, like he said, he said I am coming very soon and my reward is with me, you know. Uh, when it's time for you, you know, to do for your appraisal or anything, you know that you have done very well. You will be excited. So we, we want to present you to the Lord and we want to put you in that position where you will not be ashamed of him. That's what we want to do for you. So we're going to be sending some materials across to you. So I want to encourage you, please get in touch with us. And please, I want to encourage those of us who are watching to please share this video. You can catch up, you know, with the previous edition on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook uh, page, you know. So let uh, use it to be a blessing to someone, you know, just to encourage someone. And and we believe as you do do as you do so, the Lord will bless you richly.
may God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our master Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he will do it. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And until the same time tomorrow, may the grace of the Lord continue to be with you. Bye.